We're going to be taking communion in the next several moments, as we do normally on a Sunday morning. And this celebration is not mystical nor mechanical. It's not mystical in the sense that it achieves something before God for you or joins you to Him in some super spiritual way. It's not mechanical in the sense that if you just do this ceremony, you get credit in heaven. No, Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. This celebration of the Lord's table is a memorial. It's a remembering of what Jesus did on the cross for sinners. It also looks forward to his return. I'm going to invite you to turn to a passage in your Bibles. And if you don't have a Bible with you this morning, there are some kind gentlemen who are going to distribute Bibles. If you don't have one, we'd love for you to be able to look on. If you don't own a Bible, we would love for you to keep this as our gift to you. Uh, We love for you to be able to look on and see God's word for yourself. I want to turn your attention this morning to Genesis chapter 3, the very beginning of your Bible. It is the beginning of history. It is the beginning of the history of man on this earth. It is the beginning of sin. Genesis 3 gives us the record of the first sins committed. And we, in preparation for thinking about Jesus' death, want to look at the death of humanity. In Genesis chapter 3, you you may be familiar with the history here. This is not myth. This is actual human history recorded for us infallibly in God's word. That sin entered the world through an adversary. And that adversary tempted God's creatures who were made in his image to go against God's commandment. God generously gave them access to everything in the garden. He said, but don't touch that fruit there. And they saw that it was good to touch and good to eat. They were convinced contrary to God's word that they could get something that would bring joy. Some sort of fulfillment around God and his ways. Of course, Adam and Eve ate. We see the result. And this is what I want you to see in your Bibles this morning in verse 7. The eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loin coverings. The adversary had promised that they would see things differently, they would experience things differently, and boy, do we. And it's not good. I want you to notice this morning the human remedy to sin and guilt. The text tells us that they saw that they were naked. That is, they became aware of their exposure before God and their physical nakedness was a tangible expression of the exposure of their guilt by transgression. They knew that they had crossed God's ways. It was now evident to them they were exposed and what did they do? They, they took up a new occupation. I, I don't have any record prior to Genesis 3-7 of the textile industry of sewing. They took fig leaves. And, and if you know fig plants in the right environments with uh, lots of sun and a tropical environment with lots of water, the leaves can grow quite large. And so these would have been likely attractive coverings. I don't know what it would look like to sew them together or how you get this idea or, or what it actually looked like, but it was foolishness. They thought they could cover their exposure before God and, and all they had was fig leaf loin coverings. It couldn't hide their sin. It couldn't remedy their guilt. That is the impulse of man at exposure. I got this. Let me cover it up. I I can work at something. I I can do something to fix the problem so that nobody sees the exposure. And so God will be pleased once more. And God's not pleased with such human contraptions. That is human religion of every sort. 
And maybe you're here this morning and you have spun your wheels trying to fabricate fig leaf coverings for your burdened conscience. And you know it hasn't worked. You have not received assurance of access to God and eternal life. That only comes by God's solutions. In this very scene, if we were to keep reading, we would see God's solution. Animals were killed. Coverings were made from dead animal skins to cover them. In other words, blood was spilt. An innocent substitute had to die in the, in the place of humanity so that sins could be covered. And God provided the covering. This is a wonderful meditation for us to think today, far removed from the Garden of Eden and a first exposure to where we sit here this morning. All of us sinners by nature and by activity, all of us having been exposed before the holy bar of justice of a God whose love is unfailing and whose holiness is unflinching. How do God's love and holiness meet at the sinner, the sinner who says, fig leaves don't work, I need whatever God provides, finds mercy and forgiveness, a canceling of debt and a covering of every shame and exposure. That is what the cross of Jesus Christ is all about. He, the innocent one, bled and died in the place of sinners so that our sins would be covered totally and finally before a holy God, which is why only someone under the blood of Christ can be guaranteed eternal life, can stop running the hamster wheel trying to make fake coverings that cannot cover sin. One who turns to Jesus Christ gives up on all of those futilities and finds the freedom of the joy of belonging to God by adoption and forgiveness. We celebrate the Lord's table. We are celebrating the blood spilt of Jesus Christ. The most heinous crime ever committed. And yet he wasn't the victim of a crime. He was the perpetrator of redemption. He came to lay his life down to be the substitute for all who would believe. So believers here this morning, we gather, we drink this grape juice, a symbol of his blood. We crunch this morsel of bread between our teeth, a symbol of his body crushed under the weight of his father's wrath. We partake of these symbols to remember what Jesus did for us. Do you remember, Christian? Do you go back there in your heart? I was guilty and I'm forgiven. I was lost and I'm found. I was blind and I see I'm saved by the blood of Jesus and I'm his forevermore. That's what communion is. There's an awkward moment of silence that we practice in our participation in the Lord's table. Uh, the men will distribute the elements. You men can come down now and begin to pass those out. As you receive those, hold on to them. There will be those awkward moments of silence with nobody talking. There's no singing. It's just you and these symbols and a God who is holy and who loves sinners. And if you're a believer in the next few moments, your task before the Lord is to think about your own sins this morning, this week. Take them before the Lord and turn from them. Confess them to him. He knows them. The exposure is not a surprise to him. But rejoice in what Jesus has done for you to cover them and forgive. If you're not a believer here this morning, your task is a little bit different. The, these things are not for you. You're not to take of the bread. You're not to take of the juice if you do not belong to Jesus Christ yet. But our hope this morning is that you would receive the Lord Jesus Christ. That you would plead with him to receive you on the basis of his blood spilt for sinners. And God will not turn away any who will come to him in faith and say, I need a savior. So the encouragement to you here this morning, if you don't know Christ, is turn to Christ and have him and have eternal life this day. Then these things become symbols of a life 
altering transformation in the gospel. And if you won't turn your life to Christ, don't partake. You, you will only drink and eat judgment to yourself. That's the warning from scripture. Go to the Lord now. Consider your own heart before him. Confess sins. Rejoice in the gospel. I'll be back to close us with the taking of the elements and prayer in a moment.